Are you ready to take your real estate investing business to the next level? Well, you're in the right place. This is the Real Estate Investing Morning Show. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. With your mentors, Wayne and Gabby. Good morning and welcome to the Real Estate Investing Morning Show. Today is Wednesday, December 20th, 2023. The weather today will be a high of 2 degrees in Edmonton, 4 degrees in Calgary, 9 degrees in Vancouver, 1 degree in Saskatoon, and 5 degrees in Toronto. Thank you, Evie. More good weather, right? Yep. <laughs> What's Edmonton, sorry? 2%. 2%. 2%. 2%. <laughs> Two degrees? Two percent two percent chance of a bad day. That means we're having a good day. Oh my god, Gabby. <laughs> How's everybody doing this morning? We're broadcasting live as we do every morning, Monday through Friday at six AM Mountain Time on the Podbean app. If you'd like to be a part of the live show, all you gotta do is just download that app, search up the Real Estate Investing Morning Show, and you will get notified when we are live. And um, so big difference between listening to the podcast. Um, on your phone, on whatever, uh, iTunes, Spotify, whatever, the recorded um, episodes. Yeah, it's great. It's a great show. We, we provide tons of value, but you don't get the the added bonus or the incentive of uh, of, of getting your questions answered. It's a live show and, and you have the ability to ask any questions that you want in the chat and we will answer them for free. It's free Indeed, we will. Morning, so. um, we got a special guest today though. Uh, Calvin Hexter from Calvin Realty is going to be joining us. Uh, very shortly, I'd say in about five or 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I was chatting with him yesterday. We went, we went out for lunch and uh, sorry, I was thinking sugar water. <laughs> um, we were chatting yesterday and we're like, oh, what, what, what kind of show should we do today? What kind of topic should we talk about? And um, he's like, let's change it up a little bit. Why don't we talk about stories? Like, okay, okay. Calvin, that's easy for you. You haven't done 500 <laughs> live episodes. <laughs> Telling um, all your stories already. Telling all your stories. <laughs> um, easy for you to come up with something. Uh, so I said, you know what? That's good, though. I, 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 can't, I can't imagine we've told every story. Mm -hmm. um, there's lots of different stories. And um, he said, let's do good ones and let's do ugly ones. I'm like, okay, cool. So uh, we're going to do, uh, do that today. We're going to do some good, uh, some ugly, um, some, some, some happy yeah. stories. Yeah. Um, g g leave it to Gabby. Um, Gabby's like, you know what? I got a really nice story. <laughs> and, uh, she, cause just this whole, this whole, this whole business is so negative all the time. It's always, you know, this person didn't do this thing and this person's doing that and, um, got to deal with this and quarterly inspections. Ugh. Yeah. So. Gabby's uh, looking at it from a different angle. She's like, you know what? We've had some really, really fun experiences and good and happy experiences as well. And we've helped a lot of people along the way. Sometimes we kind of forget about that. So um, Gabby's got a pretty cool story too. So, but uh, we'll be getting into that shortly. Uh, anything new and exciting? New and exciting. Hmm. I mean, not really that I can think of. Yesterday was like trying to get appliance technicians out to properties and not getting returned phone calls and oh yeah i saw some i <laughs> had the email on it's like what the frick is going on yeah um i let we have this this appliance technician that we've used several times um and i don't know i i i feel like maybe he's out of business or something i like call and it's like a very general mailbox thing like nothing, no mention about the, the company name or anything. And I left um, two messages, one in the morning, one in the afternoon and um, no return call. And I don't know, it just, it just felt like normally I'd, I'd hear back right away. We'd get, you know, somebody answers the phone. Like, yeah, it's just. So we so, need a new appliance deck. Yeah. Eventually I, I called somebody else and, um, and they're coming out today, but yeah, I, I think I'm going to have a few appliance call outs to do, uh, this week. So good grief. Yeah. Just waiting for information from tenants before I can schedule two other ones. Yeah. Fun stuff. But I mean, like, uh, who wants to lose their dryer, like right before Christmas, you know, 
well, that's company like, coming and uh, and whatnot, just like needing to yeah get everything in order. So I understand the stress from the tenant's perspective, and um, they were eager to hear from somebody. So yeah, got that dealt with. And um, yeah, but like as far as exciting, uh, nothing, <laughs> nothing, nothing crazy happened yesterday. <laughs> I didn't get bit by a dog. You didn't get bit by a dog. Congratulations. So that's a win. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Quarterly inspections yesterday. It, uh, it wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad. I was able Good. to get out for lunch with uh, Calvin as well, like I said. Nice. And uh, we caught up and um, all in all, a pretty decent day. Um. And you had uh, your women's uh, real estate investing mastermind last night too, didn't you? Yes, I had a wonderful mastermind call last night uh, with uh, just a couple. Well, it's a smaller group, and one of the ladies couldn't make it, so um, it was a small group of us last night. And um, right before Christmas, everybody's looking forward to the holidays, and you know, like that, like little bit of lead up. So everybody was in a good mood. But we also had a really good conversation about. Um, uh, I, I can't remember quite how we got here, but how you want to be remembered. Oh, snap. Yeah. So it kind of like it, it went in a direction and landed on, you know, like how you want to be remembered. Um, legacy. Legacy, just the the memories that you make with your kids, um, the, the values that you instill in people around you that you have an influence on. Um, got pretty deep. Uh, yeah. So it was it was a really meaningful call. And um, I just love, I love, I love when, when those calls take those kinds of turns and um, you can have really important conversations. I love that. Yeah. Well, that's what it's all about, right? It's not always yeah. about the money. No. It's not always about the doors. Um, I, th- I, I honestly, a legacy is, is a big portion of, of what drives me as well. And um why I strive for growth so much. Um, it, it, it's, it ties into your ego a pinch, a pinch, because, you know, um, how far I want to get and, and, and how much of, li- like, for me, like, I want to make the most out of life. Like, you know what I mean? I don't want to have any regrets. And it does tie into ego a pinch because you also want to re- be remembered for that, right? You want to be remembered for how far, because, um, at the end of it, I mean, what does it really matter? Like, I think that, yeah, I, I, I'd say it's double, it's, it's, it has two meanings behind it. And one is that like, I don't want to waste my life. And the rest is that you want to be remembered for what you did and for, for the impact you made on the world. Right. Yeah. Um, otherwise it was, you're just kind of selfish. Yeah. And I think it, I think it, it's very different for different people. Some people don't, don't care about what they did, but about like, just like the impact of that they had on their loved ones. Whereas other people want to, um, like that legacy thing is like really key and like, what did they build? What did they leave for the, the next generations? And what impact did they have on like, on the, the world itself? Yeah. You know, like something like major that, um, some big idea or some, you know, whatever it may be. So everybody's different and it's really cool to hear different people's perspectives. And I don't know, we lost a family friend over the weekend. And so I've been like, uh, kind of going like deep into that, like how you remember people and the impact that they had on your lives and, um, those types of things. And it's just, it's a really good thing to think about now and then. And it was also, uh, we talked about like the reminder of, um, telling people while they're here, like, the impact that they've had on you and like, how cool is it to hear yeah. how special you are to somebody because of something that they may not even realize. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, so, that's, that's really lovely. Yeah. And it's um, a great call. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, absolutely. And so what's on the go for today for business? Uh, oh, you know, than, other than, other than setting up <laughs> dryer repairs. Yeah. Um, earlier this week, I was like, I was actually, I talked about this as well last night, um, that every day as part of my new routine, it's kind of like every day I tackle like a couple things that are just ongoing that need to be dealt with. Um, but I had kind of lost sight of the big picture. I'm in the middle of like moving my office and stuff. So I don't have my regular like whiteboard up and all that kind of thing. And, and so I had spent time on Monday writing a list in my notebook of 
all of the kind of ongoing stuff. And I had a moment of like, oh, shoot, like I have a lot of stuff that I need to tackle. Yeah. And some of it's pretty important to get done like right away. So um, I've been I've been doing well. I'm getting through the list, but it's nothing exciting to talk about. It's just like it's it's boring business stuff. Yeah, I think that we got notification. There's there's one there's one um, condo. Uh, there's one townhouse that we own in a condominium, and uh, they love to wait until like two weeks before to let us know. Oh, hey, by the way, here's the new condo fees, and we need them by December thirty first. Yeah, and I hate when I hate and when post dated checks. Yeah, it's just that's what I was getting at. I hate like get with the times. Why do we need post dated checks anymore? And. <laughs> You have to drop them off in person to my mailbox. Yeah, don't, in the city. Don't mail them. Oh, <laughs> for crying out loud! It's just like every time it's like it's fucking Christmas. Yeah, like you expect me to go to the bank, ask for post dated checks, or ask for checks, fill them out. Yeah, and go drive forty minutes to go and drop them off in your mailbox. Yeah. anyways, we have two that uh, two two townhouses that require post dated checks, and it is just such a pain. Good grief! Such a pain. Yeah. My hand gets cramps. We're not used to writing that much anymore. <laughs> true, true. Yeah, all the dumb little stuff you got to deal with with real estate investing. Yeah. Everybody thinks it's just super passive. No, it's, it's hand cramps <laughs> and condo fee checks. <laughs> that's that's a smaller condo too. That's uh, yeah. that's 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 why it's there's not as many units and is it self managed? It. I don't know if it's self. Yeah, that one's I think through it a rent own, so it's yeah. like I, I I didn't even really look at that property. Yeah. Um, like we we did our diligence before the, we bought it. But yeah, but it was the tenant selected. It was tenant property. selected, so I don't even like remember it. It's not like a property that I would have chosen on my own. It's a property that they chose. Yeah, but yeah, it's the it's definitely the smaller ones that are either self managed or just they're they're just small small shops that are set up and. Um, they like those fees to be able to collect like preauthorized debits and stuff like those all come at a cost, right? Yeah. So in order for them to keep their costs down, those are ways that they can do it. We're not setting up preauthorized debits that costs, you know, whatever, hundred bucks a month. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's, it just is what it is. It just kind of sucks. <laughs> all right. We'll add it to the list. Okay. Well, let's uh, take a little break here and guys, um, uh, hang tight. Uh, Calvin Hexter will be here very shortly, and we're going to get into some uh, some real estate stories. I'm That's excited. It. We'll be right back. Are you just starting to build your real estate portfolio? At Kirkwood and Brennan, we are real estate investors and mortgage brokers who understand real estate investing. Not only do we help you get a mortgage, but we help you build a better real estate portfolio. Check us out at kbmortgages.ca or call 778-847-0552. Take the time now so you have more time later. And uh, God, he's here. So it's, it feels like really weird saying nice things about him. But I mean, we really, really do like Calvin Extra. And we really, really do like Calvin Realty. <laughs> and guys, if you're planning on buying or selling you know, your property in the Edmonton area, you got to call them. Yeah. You got to call gotta. them. <laughs> They're just, oh God, there's so many nice things to say. But you know, if I said it, you wouldn't take my word for it. So what we're going to do, like we do every morning, is we're going to go into Google reviews and we're going to find a Google review. <laughs> and this is the, the this is the smallest Google review I've ever seen. Um, but Does it you know say what? good? <laughs> good. No, no. But it's a recent review. And I think it's I think it's you know what? I think it just goes to show that like you don't need so many words to, to, to get to the point. You That's know? True. Yeah. So this person says great people I would recommend. Hell yeah. I like it. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? I, could, I couldn't agree more. Uh, and there is tons of reviews for Ryland. Holy crap. Like uh, new ones? Or? Reese, yeah, oh. holy crap. Ryland must have been on a streak with uh, <laughs> buying and selling properties because he's got a crap ton. Cool. Well, it's we'll, all we'll Ryland all day in the Google reviews right now. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, cool. He must be doing something right. Yeah, he's a really nice guy. Okay, so let's uh, let's get our let's get <laughs> Calvin Axter in here, and we'll get right to the show. Um, if you guys got any questions for Calvin too, um, I don't know how much time we have, but you know, put them in the comments, and, and we'll make note of it. And 
And, you know, if we can't get to it today, then, you know, we can always uh, ask him to answer them and, and we'll get you the answers next time. Calvin, good morning. Hello. Good morning, you two. How are you guys? Awesome. Fantastic. How are you? Doing good. Getting really close to Christmas. Very, very close. Are you excited? Do you love Christmas? You can almost touch it. It's so close, which is weird. Um, I would like it for it to be like a week later, to be honest with you. If I could push Christmas back another week, I totally would. Yeah. Yeah. Scrooge. <laughs> <laughs> no, not in the sense that I don't like Christmas. I just would rather be more prepared for Christmas. You know, it just comes up so fast. There's just this time of year, instead of like slowing down, there's just always so much going on. So I think like yeah. just to like – make sure I manage it all. So I don't go through the Christmas holidays regretting anything like, or not being prepared completely for something. So, um, Christmas is great. It, it, you know, it, it's great to be able to, it's a great reminder to see some family and friends that normally you don't see at this time of year. So it's just making sure you, you see the people you got to see, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And Hey, I want to say thanks again for those donuts. Um, our family. yeah, that's great. With just tore you guys, them last night. <laughs> did you guys finish them all or how many's left? Be honest. Or if they're I, I all left, I mean, you can be honest too. <laughs> I, I, um, I devoured one when I got home. Thanks. Uh, and uh, I'd say there's probably, I'd say we ate about half. I think there's three left. Those, okay, those, are, some big, those are some big buggers. Yeah, they're no, big they and they're like, they're like rich and crazy. So like you can have like a quarter of one and be like, okay. I'm pretty yeah. sure one of them had churros on top. <laughs> yeah kind of crazy hey donut party yeah. um yeah. what we do is we so if anybody's ever tried donut party our little secret is you just put a fork and a knife in the box and then you just yeah. like as you're walking around the kitchen you just make like a little stop like a little pit stop cut a little edge off and then every single time you do like a lap you just do another one and by the end of the night like we had two donuts last night so yeah <laughs> it's, it's so easy yeah <laughs> i really had it's a friend fantastic. over last night so they were happy Okay, that's good. Very good. Very good. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm really? glad you enjoyed. Now you guys got to go burn it off at uh, at Rec Room, right? That's that's why it's a two part, you know, gift. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> DDR, yeah. buddy. Let's do some dance yeah. dance revolution. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I always I always love going to Rec Room, and there's always that one guy who's sitting there, With and his he's got professional shoes. He's in his professional shoes. He's got his backpack there. He's got um. He's got a he's got a belt that has like a like has a water bottle in it, and it's like he's just sweating. He's got a white towel, and you know he's been there for four hours trying to beat his record. <laughs> Takes it serious. I mean, that's it. That's that's his legacy, right? When you that's talk about legacy, there, is highest score on Dance Dance Revolution for his you know kids to see. Yeah, well, you know, everybody's got their thing. Uh, so so you know it's December. We are less than a week away from Christmas. Market's a little slow. There's some opportunities on the market. I've been looking on my MLS, uh, like my, 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 whatever you call it, the email notifications for new listings. We're still getting listings coming up and I'm still looking at them. I was just talking with a few of our mentees. Like I was like, there's still deals, but things have, you know, have definitely slowed down in December, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, overall volume, 100%. Yes. Yeah. I think we're down like... I don't have the stats in front of me. I think we're down around 17, 18% compared to last month, but we're actually up. Again, I don't have it in front of me. So that's, you know, my bad. I'm, uh, but we are up from last year, but we're down from the previous month, which is extremely common. So those that have never entered the winter market before, you know, some of the expectations is that you're going to see less inventory, not because they sell, it's because a lot of sellers pull it off and then relist in the spring market when it seems like everybody else lists. So whether that's a positive and it creates, you know, you, you have more competition. So no matter where you're entering the market from buying or selling, there's always pros or cons to it. Okay. It's just understanding how to read the playbook and knowing how to work around it. Um, but right now definitely expect less inventory. I mean, when you're getting your searches, like you have your searches set up right now, you're going to have less triggers to that are going to hit those searches. So you're going to see less properties come through. Um, more than anything, you'll see them start to pick up again in the second week of January and pricing is down right now across the board. Not so much with like single family, like it's very marginal. Um, it's usually the condos that kind of fluctuate a little bit more during this time, but there are some sellers, I mean, accounting wise, some sellers purposely try and ditch their property before the end of the year um, from an accounting perspective. And so sometimes if you find that seller, that's just like, they need to get off the books. Um, 
it's another good deal. So you're just Absolutely. getting out there, taking action. You'll find, I mean, the more action you take out there, the more deals you'll find really what it comes down to. So, yeah. And I was, and we were talking about this over lunch yesterday is in that, um, we're going to, I think we're going to start to see a shift here as the news headlines start to change because I've started to see little indications. I'm starting to see a few headlines already, and I know it's going to start to change here after January one, once Christmas uh, headlines uh, finish. Um, but that's the the good news for for borrowers because I'm seeing a lot of experts, mortgage experts, economists saying that they might be done with dropping the interest rates and. In the next, they're, they're not right away, but they're saying maybe third quarter 2024, we're going to start to see a trend of the interest rate starting to drop a quarter of a percent every quarter. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm reading an article right now that's saying that they're expecting a 1% drop in 2025 and a 1.5% drop in 2026. So again, mm-hmm. like every quarter dropping at 0.25%. And they're going to, they're saying that it could be starting, you know, mid to late 2024. So Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's, it's not quite, or it's not quite, you know, um, we don't, we don't have interest rates dropping right away, but when you see those headlines start to change, that's when those headline readers really start to react and they're like, Oh my God, interest rates are coming down. Everything they said about interest rates coming down, the prices are going to go up. I have to buy something right now. So we're going to, I think that we're going to see a lot more action in 2024. I think that people are going to start reacting in a way be like, okay, I need to start getting some really good deals now before interest rates come down and then everybody comes in. So I, I think that 2024 is going to be monstrous. I think that the real players are really going to just jump in the market. We're going to start to see some changes in the prices and then, then everybody's just going to flood. So mm-hmm. I, 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 I'm, uh, I'm kind of excited. I'm kind of excited for it. I, we've been waiting for this, right? All the experts have been saying, you know, two, two and a half years and that of, you know, then, then we can expect the interest rates to stop going down and start going, um, or sorry, stop going up and then start going down again. So mm-hmm. I, I think we're finally here. It's been two, two and a half years, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot of, a lot of people don't want to go on this roller coaster ride any further. So a lot of people just put themselves on the bench and, and that roller coaster ride, they don't want to go up. They only want to go down kind of thing. So when they start to see that, you know, long term, they're in a better post position for managing their you know, their month, their, their monthly expenses on a property. Um, there's that sense of comfort. And I think there's a sense of relief that people get when reading it. So I completely agree. And I mean, it's however the narrative they spin in their head, do it now, do it later, um, that they feel because there's, there's always reasons to invest in real estate and there's always reasons to not invest in real estate. It just depends on what kind of narrative do you want to be creating in your head? Right. Cause again, there's always opportunities, but there's always reasons not to. Right. And there'll be a new reason not to, you know, next year, even though interest rates are down for some people, because yeah. um, there's just always something that's happening in the world. You know what I mean? And, and, Calvin, and- prices are too high. <laughs> I can't find a I deal. Mean, that's, I mean, that's a thing. Man. That's a, I, I mean, and there's also like political, who's in government, who's not in government. Yeah. Um, Virus is going around. That's a big one. Um, there's just so many don't reasons that it. you look don't over the last- it. No more pandemic. The last, you know, you look at the last like five years and like you can almost come up like every six months of a reason not to invest in real estate, not to take action. But I mean, one of my favorite sayings is like, you know, when it comes to interest rates and prices and and if you're not buying because of interest rates or prices, maybe, maybe write this down, you know, would you rather buy at a slightly higher interest rate temporarily or would you rather buy when the prices are, you know, significantly higher permanently? Because once you lock in that price for a property, that doesn't ever change ever, right? So it's like, would you rather handle the short-term higher interest rates, maybe at a lower price? Or would you rather pay at a higher price and slightly lower interest rates? Because one's temporary and one's fixed. So it's just another way to look at it as well. It's a million dollar question. And I think Mm -hmm. that, um, I mean, to me, the answer is easy, but to a lot of other people, it's a hard thing to grapple with. But Mm -hmm. I think more than anything, um, it it sounds like it's a great time to uh, reach out to Kelvin and get set up on those searches. (laughs) There we go. And we were actually, we were talking about this yesterday, um, Wayne and I, 
even, you know, we, we have a lot of our teammates that are really kicking butt and I love the shout out to Ryland. Ryland might be listening or, you know, Ryland actually gets up at like 5 AM. So I'm, I'm wondering if he should be, he should become like a regular listener. I think he listens every once in a while, but I think he listens to the recordings. So big shout out to Ryland. Um, yeah, a lot of the teammates are kicking some serious butt. So, um, happy to have you guys, anybody that's interested to even introduce some of the, uh, the realtors on the team that are just rocking right now that are just Corey's you know, here right now. Corey's happening. here every morning. Corey's awesome. Corey's here. Yeah. You guys should give a shout out to Corey. Anybody that's listening, fire Corey, a big shout out. Incredible. Um, as well, you guys will see Google reviews through, uh, first clients as well, um, that are coming in and just, yeah, great, great guy. Lots of like trade experience too. So everybody has their own, um, you know, super strengths in real estate and uh yeah you guys you guys gonna get to know these uh like Corey ryland on the team that do a lot of investment real estate and levi so yeah big shout out to those guys um there's more but you know the, the shout outs will come later so <laughs> very cool okay we we promise the people story time are we gonna are we gonna sure. go there wayne yeah I'm okay. gonna like, go first, yeah. like where, where do we i so i've got two maybe three Good. gabby's got two <laughs> um, we, we mentioned earlier, Gabby, Gabby's got a really happy one. I'm going to try and keep these stories kind of. I have short and sweet. I, I've got long what are um, the with, listeners? with math. Let's ask the listeners. Can I see like from the listeners perspective, can you guys throw in the chat? Do you guys want me to tell you like a horrifying story, a super heartwarming story? Where do you want me to start off? Cause I got a lot. You can understand. I do real estate. Like, I mean, you guys do real estate full time, but I like, I literally, it's always real estate. Like, and it's been always real estate for since like 2013. So the amount of stuff that you compile, same with you guys. I mean, it's just like, it's always real estate. So it's like, the stories are just, what do people want? Do they want, okay, horrible? Okay. If I hear, I mean, right now it's hundred percent horrible. So unless anybody else intervenes, I'll give you a horrible story. Another horrible. Horrified where people would horrible. drop you. Oh wow, would drop me? <laughs> oh. I don't have, I mean, okay. Um, tenant story or realtor story. It looks like people want to hear a realtor story. Okay. All right. This is me being most vulnerable as a realtor. I have lots of other stories, but this is one of my most vulnerable stories I have yet ever really yet to tell publicly. Okay. If Wayne and I were having a beer after ball hockey, this story could maybe coming up depending on, okay. the, on, on how many beers he got me. Okay. Oh, so okay. we're just going to say I'm five beers deep and I'm talking to you guys. So I feel comfortable. I'm in my comfortable space. Okay. So second year as a realtor. So that would have been 2020, no, 2019. I uh, had a, uh, another agent on my, on, not on my team, on another team I was on. Um, and they asked me to fill in for them while they were away. So I didn't really have a lot of information. They just sent me the address. And I had to meet the inspector at, uh, at the home for this, this buyer. And the buyer was actually out of, if I remember correctly, the buyer was out of province. That's why they couldn't make it. So this, this teammate is away. They said, Calvin, can you fill in with, you know, for me for this week while I'm away? I need you to let the inspector in and coordinate with the inspector. And so I ended up calling the inspector, gave him the address that I had. Um, I met them at the property. And it was unusual because when we went to the property, they said it it didn't have a basement. So there's a lot of basement lists, not a lot of basement list houses, but there's some basement list houses kind of a lot of, along 127th Ave and North or even like Roslyn. Anyways, they said it wasn't supposed to have a basement, but it had a basement. And so I was like, oh, you know, genius me. They didn't think it had a basement. It has a basement. Think about how much more value that these clients are now going to see by having this extra space, extra square footage. Surprise, basement. Um, okay. Yeah. And so we ended up uh, doing the full inspection about three and a half hours. And, uh, and then after the inspection was done, um, I called the, I called the realtor and I said, Hey, the inspection's done. And I said, Hey, you know, there's a basement. He's like, no, there's certainly not a basement. Um, and I'm like, that's so strange. Pardon? Feeling weird right now. And then I'm like, okay, well, what's going on? And, uh, and then I realized that I ended up getting the inspection done on a house that wasn't actually pending. It was actually a house one block over and I completely messed that up. And I met, the, so we Ooh. literally did an inspection on a home that wasn't the home that it was supposed to be. And I spent three and a half hours in that home. Um, 
So the inspector goes home. He's like priding himself. I did such a good job today. You know, good job. He did a great job. Excellent job. Right. And, and then I call him. I'm like, we just did the inspection on the wrong home. We have to go to the right home. And so God bless him. It was like getting into like dinner time and he ended up spending the extra time. Thank God it was a basementless house because it took less time. But when it comes to like one of the most embarrassing moments ever, it's, and I had to call the realtor and explain they're like, Hey, I literally just did a three and a half and uh, you know, we'll give you the inspection for free, but just don't get alarmed um, for what I'm about to tell you. Um, so it was incredibly strange. It was, think about it this way. It was, it was one number different and it was a house that was up for sale one block, one block away. So it was just like, it was a freak wow. accident on how that even occurred. Yeah never happened ever again and hopefully god it never does but that was that was horrifying for me and i'm i'm hoping it was kind of horrifying for you guys listening so there you go there's my first story kelvin i think that um i think that that's a great story and i'm shocked that um you don't share that with everybody i think it's awesome <laughs> but well also, it's it's awesome because it didn't happen to you <laughs> well yeah but i'm i'm curious to know i'm curious to know was the house that you inspected um like was it like an occupied house and they were just like out at work and had no clue or was it a vacant house um no that one was occupied uh the second one was vacant so that's what made it even worse is that there actually was their stuff in there they were just at work oh my goodness yeah. <laughs> yeah. i wish you could see the the look on my face Dude, yeah. way to set the bar for this episode. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're the ones that said horrifying. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! Wow, that's great. I love that. <laughs> okay, yeah, all right. I don't even know what to say. Um, I'm so glad you still have your license. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I might not after this show if Rika's listening. Rika, just maybe don't listen anymore. Oh, man. Okay. Wow. Crazy. Okay. So how do you want to handle this? Do you just want to go around the table and just like, okay, so I can just, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. I want Well, how, do we seriously go from that to Gabby's happy go lucky story? <laughs> I, well, you go, Wayne, you go. Well, I don't. Okay. So I got a deal. Actually, I wanted to share a deal. Um, because, you know, uh, and may, maybe it's a little bit of a is what's what's today? Is it Thursday? uh not wednesday oh, okay so it's not a throwback uh what, what, what's in the friday's flashback so what's wednesday mm. way back wednesday sure yeah let's go way back that. wednesday i wanted to do a bit of a story about um uh, way back when um when interest rates were lower <laughs> and uh deals were different because i know there's a lot of people that are starting right now in real estate investing and um you know they're running the numbers but it seems like all the deals that you're kind of looking at right now there are still cash flowing deals but seems like all the deals you're looking at you're like you're, you're kind of you're playing like a game where i'm in i'm getting this because i know one day interest rates won't be this high anymore right because we've lost all of our mortgage pay down and we're just basically just playing appreciation and cash flow so i'm going to go back to a deal that we did where it was actually a deal i was able to help someone out so kind of a good story um i was able to help out a fellow investor who was stuck in a really crappy situation and it's a little bit of a long story, but I'm going to try and I'm going to try and sum it up real fast and not ruin it. So this was a this was an off market deal that a an investor had in, in Edmonton. He's a, he was wholesaling it and he, he couldn't take this deal on. So um, it, I thought it was a really good deal. I just wasn't in a position at the moment to do the deal. We had the fine. We had the money, but we didn't have the the financing. Um, it was just bad timing. And this is at a time, keep in mind that like, I don't know if you remember, Calvin, everybody has access to private lenders these days. Like there's no shortage of private lenders, but like five years ago or, or longer, there were no private lenders. Like most people didn't even know what a private lender was. They didn't know that you could do something other than, you know, ATV right. or RBC. So like at that time, like I just didn't have the financing for it. And if you wanted the financing, you had to put like 25% down. So like that additional capital required was like, which just wasn't in the cards for us when we were doing this deal. And so um, my buddy who's an investor, he, he had this deal and he, I looked at it, I liked it. Nobody else liked it for some reason. And uh, he eventually uh, found a buyer, but in the 11th hour, the buyer backed out. And uh, the investor who was wholesaling it had already moved, removed conditions. 
And he was in a really crappy spot because he had built a relationship with that seller too, the owner who was in a really crappy situation. And um, this wholesaler just felt terrible. Like he had, he had to go back to the, to the seller and be like, I'm real sorry. I know we're supposed to close in like two days, but I can't do it. And the guy backed out. So um, this investor is a really good person felt really bad for the seller. He, um, he decided to the wholesaler, he decided to close on it and he thankfully had access to some private, uh, money and a private lender was able to put a mortgage on it. But now this wholesaler had now inherited this problem and he didn't have the funds to be able to do the work. And this house was like, it was completely dilapidated. Just like it was, it was in rough shape, like really, really dirty, smoked in, you know what I mean? The stains, just like a really bad looking house. Um, it had it up, had opportunity, but he just didn't have the means to be able to, to, to do anything with it. So he, he called me up and I'm, I'm like, I'm sorry, man. Like I, I can't, I can't do it. I just don't have the financing. And, um, what we ended up doing is had a long conversation and what I, I, I got the price to where I wanted to be, but I, I still didn't have financing. So I asked him, I said, Hey, since you got financing anyways, would you mind doing an agreement for sale? And he agreed to it. He said, yeah, absolutely. Like anything, I'll do anything in order to get this off my plate. Cause I, I, I can't, I'm losing money now. I'm paying every month. You know, I think it was something like $2,000 a month or something like that or $2,500 a month. And he had, he couldn't do anything with it. He was sitting on it. So thankfully, you know, we were able to figure out a creative way to do that. He had already had financing. He carried the financing for me and I made payments to him. And then he took that money and paid his private lender. So, um, I think it was, we, we got that AFS for zero money down. So we were able to get into that property for zero money down. And I think he had it at like eight or 9% interest, which for zero money down for a private loan is like ridiculously good. And like in today's numbers, like you can't, you can't find that. You can't find zero money down yeah. and you can't find it for less than 16 or 17% with, with points on top. Right. So 9%, you know, way back Wednesday, like. That was at the time we took it for granted, but it's, it's so cool to kind of look back at it. So uh, the strategy, for, yeah, yeah. So the strategy for this property was, um, it was a zero money down AFS. We we're going to add a secondary suite because it had a separate entrance and we were going to burr it. So we're going to use the burr strategy. And um, so what that means is that after we have bought it, we've renovated it, we've, uh, we're going to put tenants in it and then we're going to refinance it. So we're going to go to the back to the bank and ask them to reappraise it and refinance at the new value. And the numbers looked good. The numbers looked really good because um, we, we, we knew that area very well and we knew what the after repaired value was. So uh, we were looking at potentially getting most of our money out. So we spent the next five months. Uh, we added a secondary suite. It all went really good. It was, uh, it was a lot of fun. At the six month mark, we, we refinanced it. Uh, so we called the bank, they sent out an appraiser. The problem was, is that the appraisal came in a little bit lower. And, uh, after five months, I guess a few other properties in the area had sold and brought down the average. So the, uh, the appraisal came in a little bit lower, so we didn't get as much money as we wanted, but, um, Gabby, do you remember how much money we had left in this deal? I don't. $37,000 left in the deal. On a suited property. On a four hundred and sixty thousand dollar asset so we were able to like now like, after the refinance we had less than 10 percent down in this four hundred and seventy thousand dollar property so i think it was like something like we had eight percent left in yeah. so you think about it like if i were to buy this four hundred seventy thousand dollar house with a secondary suite i would have had to put 20 percent down which would have been 80 ninety four thousand dollars instead i only had thirty seven thousand dollars in it so it's just like our ROI went up significantly, not to mention the fact, <clears throat> the instant equity that we earned from that deal, because we did the renovation, we increased the value, even though we had $37,000 left in the deal, I believe there was about $85,000 worth of equity in the property, the difference between the value and the mortgage. So hear me out. We actually made, uh, where was it? in instant profit equity from that renovation, $51,000 we made from doing that renovation. Interesting. That's fantastic. There you go. Then you got mortgage paid them. You've got the actual value of the property because the appraisal came in low, but the actual value of the property was higher. And so we had mortgage paid down for five years. I'm going to give you the number of the actual, because um, what do you, I, I want to, 
in the comments, guys, what do you guys think the ROI was on that $37,000 investment? What do you think the ROI was for five years on this property when interest rates were 3%? And the value of the property went up $30,000 on top of that. So we've got $51,000 in equity. We've got, it was a cash flowing property as well. This, sorry, this is, um, this is so hard to do this story uh, quickly because that property cash flowed $636 a month as well after repairs and maintenance. I think it was like a 900 or a thousand dollars without repairs and maintenance. We had a cash flowing property as well. Cash flow was six hundred thirty-six dollars a month. Mortgage pay down was four hundred forty thousand dollars over five years. We had fifty-one thousand dollars in profit equity from the renovation. We had thirty thousand dollars that it was worth more, and then it, it appreciated thirty thousand dollars more on top of that. Anyone have any guesses? It's a lot of information. <laughs> Gabby's like Gabby's eyes are rolling back. She's like, okay, just give him the goddamn number. Four hundred and ten thousand. Sorry. <laughs> 410% ROI in five years. Wow. The average was 82% ROI per year. And we were able to help out our friend, another investor who was in a really crappy situation. Win-win, baby. Win-win. Well, and also we were able to help that seller out as well. Yeah. Who like they were in our, the crappiest position mm-hmm. because they just needed to get out. And kudos to that investor who who honored their agreements, who honored their purchase contract and, you know, said to themselves, you know what, like, I know it's not my responsibility here, but I'm going to honor my agreement with them and I'm going to be a good person. So the seller won, the wholesaler got a win out of it. And then we got a win out of it as well. And we still own that property today. And it's, it's one of our best performing properties. That's amazing. That's amazing. That's a feel, that's a feel good. Yeah. We want your feel good. <laughs> what do you, you want feel good? Yeah. Um, okay. So listeners, you tell me, I mean, I asked Wayne before this when we were chatting, I was like, should we make it like fun competitive? We can like almost have like the listeners score it and like try and like one up each other as we go. <laughs> but it can't be, it has to be a real story. You can't be like making it up, you know? Um, yeah. Beat that ROI. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to have one quick more horrifying, like 10 second story. And then I'm going to go into something heartwarming that I can leave you guys with. Is that fair? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, just because someone said horrifying, so let's just stay on horrifying, then we'll leave feeling really good. Okay. Um, I have a property in St. Albert. It has three units. It has um, a single studio. You go downstairs, so it's a bi-level. Um, so it's a bungalow. And, and you walk in, and you go downstairs, and then to the left, there's a, a studio. And then to the right, there's a two-bedroom. Um, I had the same client, or sorry, I had the same tenant in the studio for... I don't know, two, three years. And then the main floor tenant, I don't know, it was like six months new. And then we just got a brand new tenant in the two bedroom um, basement suite. And uh, he was younger. He was a mechanic and he called me one day and he was just like irate. Um, And I couldn't really understand what he was saying. He was just doing a lot of mumbling, but you could just tell he was like very, yeah, there was just something happened and he was very like distraught. And, And it sounded like something with the property. And, and then once he kind of, got to his words, he was talking about how the main floor tenants out to get him and he can't live here anymore. And he just started like screaming and, and I couldn't really get anything else of that young up. And then I told him to text me because he was too, too, too excited. Um, so he didn't text me and then a week goes by and then he, he goes irate again, almost like in these weekly intervals. And, and the second week he finally got it out and he was saying that, he was listening through the vents in the basement and the main floor tenant was, was, was whispering to him through the vents back. Like, so he was, he was hearing things through the vent. He put his ear up to the vent and the main floor tenant was whispering through the vents to him. And you don't want me to tell you what, what they were saying. Um, It was like, it, it was extreme. It was like from like, he's gonna kill me kind of thing uh, to she's going to do something else to me. Um, And and this would just go on and on. And we just didn't understand. I was like, okay, so I'm stuck in the position right now. And I'm like, is it, is, is it actually happening? Is she whispering through the vents? You know, can, like, is it, can the, can she actually, you know, or is, is he making this up? And so it was a really unusual, like 
yeah, it was, it was a terrible experience. Um, and obviously the main floor tenant, once I, I had to be careful because how you bring that up to the main floor tenant without freaking them out mm -hmm. and then having them leave the house. And then you just leave the, the basement tenant that you probably don't want to have. Um, mm -hmm. So it's a very careful, you know, when you wear your real estate hat, if you're managing the property, you got to kind of be a bit of a counselor at some times. And you really got to think out how you're going to be approaching the situations, not to freak out anybody, but also on a safety perspective. I mean, if the t basement tenant or the main floor tenant, it's like a game of clue at that point, which one's the killer. You know what I mean? <laughs> Realistically, which one actually could be the killer. And without, you know, getting, you want to get rid of all the, the, the victims, right? Or the, the cat, you know, the, the civilians, you want to get rid of the killer. So anyways, we did our detective work. We got rid of the right person. And you uh, think, you think. We think they could still be at the property. That's right. So hopefully none of my other tenants are listening um, in that property right now. So hopefully they're not regular it's listeners of the show. Movie. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, there's that, my uh, quick one. Yeah. So yeah. That was that, really, that, that was creepy. Yeah, that sort of thing, like to me, just screams like some sort of mental illness, like because that's pretty extreme to to have. Yeah, <laughs> it, it it was one hundred percent certified as mental illness. We found out afterwards. Um, yeah, yeah, it was. I think it was schizophrenia that that ended up happening. Yeah. I ended up talking to their parents afterwards, and they left, and they didn't. They weren't taking. It always comes down to not taking their medication. That's exactly what it was. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, we wow. we found the right. We found the right one. We kept. We kept the right one. We had the, the other one go to uh, a home that's more suited for um, yeah. their current behavior. Yeah. Oh, so I wish them the best. It just, it was one. very freaky. Yeah. Very, very mm -hmm. freaky when that happened. Um, okay. So let's, let's, let me, let me, you guys want a good heartwarming one. So yeah. this is one of my yeah. favorite stories <laughs> in real estate. Um, no one's going to buy a rental property now, Calvin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, beat that. Someone was, I mean, yeah, it, there's way more. It can get way worse. There's other worse ones, but that's that's just a creepy one that kind of like gives me the chills when I think about it. So the heartwarming story, um, I had a family in Northeast reach out to me, not giving me any context, but just said, you know, we'll, we'll often have people reach out to us a lot, a lot of times, honestly, because of our Google reviews, you know, when you're shopping realtors, what do you do? You'll look at, you know, type in top realtors, Edmonton, uh, best realtor Edmonton, then you'll see what comes up and then you'll see all the realtors that pay for sponsored ads <clears throat> off the beginning. And then you'll usually go through like Google reviews and see kind of in your area of who has the, you know, the best reviews or the most or combination of the two just or friendly pictures right and so this this family called us and and i picked up and i went over to their home and i got to know a little bit more they've, they've been in the home for about five years and they wanted to sell and i was getting to the part of the conversation to, to understand why they were you know why they were selling because there were it was really weird because normally people sell when they need to you know either increase the size of their home decrease or you know, maybe some other reasons they have to relocate um, for a job or whatever else. And, and the family was very situated. Like it didn't look like they were ready to move at all. Um, normally when they go in for like listing presentations, you can tell they're kind of already making the steps to move. Um, so you can tell something kind of abruptly happened because they were very much in the middle of their day. Like, a, like they didn't clean up or anything. It was just, you know, mm -hmm. It's like when you don't want guests over, that's how it looked in the house and no judgment from my end. I mean, I go into all different houses and we're there just to solve a problem. I don't care about the mess. It's just, you know, but it was just unusual because there's certain standards that I typically see and it just, it didn't follow what we normally see. And so we, we started the conversation of, you know, why are you looking at selling? And the wife uh, over the last three years has been getting brain surgery to remove a tumor um, in her head. And the husband has been working two jobs to try and pay for all the medical bills, apparently, um, because they just, they, it got too much. It got to the point where they thought they could handle it. He, uh, I think the kids were working that could as well. I think there was three kids and, uh, and, and the bills got so heavy that they got behind and they got so far behind that the bank was ready to foreclose on them within three weeks. I think it was three weeks or a it was really close. I think it was around three weeks or so. Um, and so I was like, okay, so you're, let me just understand this. If you don't pay X amount by, by set time, 
you're going to lose your family home that your kids grew up in. And I didn't phrase it like that because I don't want to make it, I don't want to make it worse. I don't want to, you know, stir emotions any worse. Yeah. Um, but in my head, I'm thinking, okay, so I need to come up with a solution. I got to help these guys or they're going to be in a position where they're going to be out of their family home that they love. Like they love it so much on their deck. They put a projector screen and like this whole, like, you know, you like take like a, like a gazebo. They took a gazebo and made it like into like a three seasons room. And they have like, they put a barbecue inside there, which is completely dangerous. And I told like, they said it was dangerous. Anyways, they, they make like all these little forts around the house. You could tell they didn't want to leave. So I was like, how do we make them not, you know, how do we help so they don't leave their home? Given some of the terrible experiences and cards that they've been help, uh, dealt recently. And so um, I got thinking and I had a client from a uh, client out of province and he was interested in purchasing a buy and hold and he was ready to go. And so I was thinking, you know, why don't we look at the owners maybe taking a tenant position in the home where they can stay there and maybe offer like a rent to own option where they could go back and reclaim the home after a couple of years once they get their finances back in order. Um, and so I, I, I brought that up to the investor. I said, you know, there's this really nice family. They've gone through some financial hardship, um, you know, just literally just due to just terrible hands that were, they were, they were dealt. Um, they want to stay for the long term and eventually buy back the home potentially through like a rent to own style option. And they quite like that. And so we ended up actually putting all the pieces together. They ended up getting their money over to, um, to the bank. It prevented them from getting foreclosed and getting pushed out of the home. And as far as I know, to my knowledge, they're still, um, they're still in their family home today, which is awesome. So when we talk about heartwarming, like really making a big difference, that's the stuff I love the most is where you can truly make the difference of like someone's life course change a little bit. Um, that was, that's, that's probably one of my favorite heartwarming stories. Yeah. That's, that's absolutely amazing. And I love that there was like a few different factors at play here. One, just that like, you're a good person and recognize that they needed, they needed help and how can we, you know, fix this for them. But also it just shows like resourcefulness and that, creativity. And, and creativity, resourcefulness and creativity to be able to be like, wait a second, like, what if we did this? And what if we did this? And I think I know somebody. You know what I mean? So to be able to pull all that together in such a short period of time is pretty remarkable, but also shows, you know, the care that you had to, to go there in the first place. Yeah. So mm -hmm. kudos to you, Calvin. That's amazing. I love that. Yeah. So, I mean, any realtors that are listening, like diving into the books, going into the experiences and like practicing real estate is the best thing you can do because you can help solve some of these issues that you might be faced with. And sometimes it might actually come down to your ability to solve a really complex or, you know, mildly complex issue for these people. And it, it really does make a difference. So what you do makes a difference. And uh, I'm just lucky that I was prepared and I had experience with that stuff going into it or else that family would be out of their favorite family home that their kids grew up in. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's a, uh, it's heartwarming. It feels good. That's, that's, yeah, it's, those are the best feel good moments when you, when you truly make a difference that way. I mean, there's so many different ways you can, but yeah. So thank you for listening. There we go. Heartwarming. There you guys yeah. go. Didn't leave you guys on a sad, uh, you know, I didn't tell you guys the story where the tenant left a knife out um, on their step. So the basement tenant would see it as a threat. I didn't tell you guys that one on purpose because I wanted you guys to feel heartwarmed and, and enter the day feeling good. So there you go. Except that you just did, Calvin. You just told us. <laughs> man, oh man. I, yeah, yeah. Tenants are full of surprises. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. I love it. I think that pretty much takes us right to the seven o'clock hour. So um, let's, let's just re re rewind us at uh, like 30 seconds, no knife, no step, no threatening. No, no, and, no, 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 uh, no, no, no. Remember, no. remember that really beautiful story that Calvin just yeah. told us. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> and let's, yeah. let's all walk into our Wednesday thinking about, you know, how we can make people's lives better. I, I always say that there is no better business uh, than a business where you can help people and make it profitable. And uh, uh, though most stories that people tell, the exciting ones are the ones where people hear voices in the vents 
and there's knives and the house got burnt down. Nobody ever talks about the really good deals, the deals that went really well and the, the amazing tenants, um, you know, who take care of your place or the feel good stories about how you're able to help um, this family uh, avoid losing their, you know, their forever home or their family home. So it, it, um, it it's good to remember stories like this. And it's good to remember that uh, why we're doing it. And we are trying to be rental housing providers and not, um, you know, uh, slumlords. So, um, yeah, like Gabby said, let's let's move forward into Wednesday with that good positive attitude, that win-win attitude. And uh, when you guys are ready to pull that trigger, like I said, call Calvin. Call Calvin Realty. <laughs> They're all over socials, right? You guys, it's very easy to find you guys, you and yeah. the team. Exactly. Yeah, we want to we want to hear from you guys. We want to we want to help out as much as we can. So, yeah, we love what we do. Uh, We're passionate. So. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you for coming on the show and um, looking forward to having you on in the new year. And let's see how the uh, the story changes a little bit with the market in the new year. Like I said, I, as soon as those headlines start dropping, I'm, we're going to start seeing the conversation changing a little bit. And I'm going to be excited to see how this, you know, what's going to be crazy, Calvin, the spring market, mm -hmm. February, March, you watch. I think, I think we're going to, we're going to have a crazy, crazy spring market, at least for investors. Yeah. What do you think, Everly? Yeah. Everly, what do you think? You don't know? She's like shrugging her shoulders. She's like, I don't know. What are you talking about? I just stumbled in here. <laughs> <laughs> you, what right. you need to do is you should have like a little sound clips of like Everly. And so like when she doesn't say something, you just say it for her. But it's like from her voice. You know what I mean? You just like record her. Anyways. Brilliant. I'm getting off topic. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I'm going to get a catchphrase. It's going to be like, walla, walla, walla. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do you want to say thank you to Calvin for the for the donuts and the and the and the rec room uh, thing? Thank you, <laughs> Calvin. You're the best. What was that? Okay. Well, thanks, everything. I appreciate. It. <laughs> She's gonna leave you a solid five star review on Google right now. Yeah, I really I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Merry Christmas, okay, you guys. Happy holidays, everybody. Bye now. You as well. Bye. 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 Thanks for listening to the Real Estate Investing Morning Show. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Interested in being a guest on the show? Send us an email to info at reimorningshow.com. 